If you've been practicing and practicing and practicing and making no progress, this video is for you. I'll show you a specific practice routine that leads to serious growth, even if you only have 30 minutes each day to practice. You can do this. Welcome to the non-glamorous drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can master the drums, you can conquer the instrument when you are armed with the right know-how. I believe this video will help you do just that. A good practice routine incorporates versatile methods that can grow with you. My thing with practice routines is that they can very easily turn into marching band, drum corps exercises where you're just sitting down at your kit and you're playing through the same stuff every day for the sake of checking the box. That's not exactly a good thing because that can cause you to become stagnant. That's why you might practice the same thing over and over again and not really get anywhere because maybe you've got the what. You've got a good what to practice, but you don't actually know how to practice it. And that's what we're getting at today. The how is more important than the what. What do I mean by this? Well, you could practice your singles every day for weeks, months, years, and not get any better at them, still have no rebound, and your wrist is hurting and nothing's good, and you can't play fast and you can't play controlled. Even though you've logged hours and hours and hours into practicing your singles, maybe that's all because there's one little grip issue going on. So because you've overlooked a grip issue, a core root problem, you're having these ongoing issues with your singles and logging more hours practicing the singles is doing you no good, it's only making it worse. How you practice something is more important than what it is you're practicing. So when you're practicing singles, be paying attention to things like grip. Be making sure that you're playing them well. Be listening for those things, watching for those things. That's how you practice something really well. And so I wanted to make that point first because that's kind of an overarching thing that makes this practice system work. If you're not approaching it with that mindset, then you very well could be going in circles and not growing. So that's the key to growth. Keep that in the back of your mind as we move forward. So this practice routine that I've followed for years, ever since I first started playing the drums and I always encourage my students to follow is really three parts. Number one is hand technique. Super important, super core, but essential to playing anything on the drums well. So that's our first thing. Number two, coordination. Coordination encompasses foot technique as well. And so you're gonna work the feet just as much as you're working the hands and you're gonna get everything working together or offsetting each other, whatever you need to do. And so between those two categories, hand technique and coordination, that's actually all the technical stuff that we need to work on. Between those two categories, that is technique. And we can get to where we can play whatever we wanna play just by working on those two things. So what does that leave us with for part three? That leaves us with music. Music is the why. Music is the why we got into the drums in the first place. That's what keeps us excited, keeps us motivated. That's why I play the drums. I didn't get into the drums so that I could practice hand technique and coordination exercises. Sure, we can have fun with those and we can take satisfaction in accomplishing great technical things on the drums, but I got into the drums so that I could play songs well. I had a favorite band that got me pumped about music and about the drums. You should too. So believe it or not, if you consistently work on these three categories, you will get consistent growth results. Little by little, you're gonna grow because that means you have a well-rounded practice session that's hitting everything. So now the obvious question is, well, what do you practice within each of these categories? And how do you manage to practice all of this stuff every day? Because it can definitely add up to a lot of things. That's where we're going now. I'm gonna outline this whole framework and all the things you should practice within hand technique, all the things you should practice within coordination. And then at the end, I will give you a specific example practice routine that you can take right now to your practice room and follow and you will begin getting results. But first I wanna teach you the framework so you know how this works. By the way, I'll be mentioning several method books as we go. You can go buy the method books if you wanna go deep with this. Maybe you already have some of these method books if you've ever taken any kind of drum lessons before but they're not necessary. And because I'm gonna give you a specific routine with specific exercises and patterns, you can do all of this stuff without the method books. But I'm just gonna mention them because I've used them a lot and I have my students use them too. So part one, hand technique. The core, most core thing to be working on, going back to the singles analogy earlier, was you gotta be getting rebound. So practice rebound, that's the first thing. And be practicing that rebound as you're playing singles and doubles and paradiddles. It's kinda like you can use those basic rudiments that you're practicing every day to work on rebound. That's our how. So the singles, doubles, paradiddles, that's the what. The how, how we're practicing them is we're practicing them with this focus on grip and rebound, making sure we're playing them well. That's how you grow. And then make sure you're bridging the gap between learning these hand patterns on your pad or on your snare to actually applying them to the kit. Because I see with so many students, they'll get the rebound going great and their hands look great when they're just playing on their snare. 
But then we start playing a groove or we play a fill around the kit and suddenly it's just stiff and awkward and, and not good and they don't sound good as a result. And that's because it's one thing to master these fundamentals on a pad, on a single surface, but it's another to move it around the kit because then you're going out of your comfort zone and so you have to very intentionally maintain the right grip while you're playing around the kit. So hand technique doesn't just mean practicing on your pad. It also might mean sitting and playing the Billie Jean beat, just the basic beat, and as you're playing that, focusing on your hands, making sure you're staying loose. It might mean playing slow singles around the kit, you know, like a big slow 16th rock fill. And as you're playing that, you're focusing on smooth motion and rebound. You might be playing on the kit, but that is hand technique practice. So again, the what doesn't matter so much, it's the how. So my biggest recommended method for this, if you wanna dig into the, the method books and go that route, that's totally cool. Get Stick Control by George Lawrence Stone. Basically the book starts off with a bunch of different stickings and so you're coordinating your hands and you're working on building control and precision. If you don't have the book though, that's totally fine. I'm gonna give you some stickings you can practice. Part two, coordination. So all of the hand technique is no good if we can't coordinate that with our feet and we can't play cool stuff on the drums and we can't make music and improvise and play what we hear in our head without good coordination. So this is super important. This is also one of the most common frustrations that I hear from, from you guys and from students is that I just can't get things coordinated. I can't get the limb independence that I want that seems like it should be easy, but I'm constantly hitting roadblocks. Well, I'm just gonna give you some very specific things you can practice that will help you with coordination. And of course, we'll go way deeper with this also in the specific example routine. Number one, in the same way that we practice basic rudiments with our hands, practice those basic rudiments with your feet. Whether you've got a double bass pedal or you've just got your left foot on the hi-hat, doesn't matter. Practice singles, doubles, paradiddles, but do all these things very slowly. Speed is not the goal, control and precision is the goal. Make sure you're playing things cleanly. That's how, that's how you get really good at playing anything that's complex. You learn it slowly, make sure you play it well slowly, and then later on you can go as fast as you want to. But if you're skipping that step, you're gonna be hitting roadblocks, you're gonna go in circles, and you're not gonna grow. Also, practice rudiments with your hands, like you've been doing, working hand technique, but do it on top of some sort of foot ostinato. What's an ostinato? Well, that's just a repeated pattern. Maybe it's just quarter notes with your feet, or if you're playing like a, a Latin, like a bossa nova, boom, get, boom, boom, ch, boom, boom, that would be an ostinato. So have a pattern like that and practice your rudiments with your hands on top of that. So you're basically freeing up your hands to play whatever they wanna play around the kit while your feet are playing something steady. That's so practical because that happens in so many situations where maybe you're just playing a four on the floor song and maybe there's a tom pattern, but you're struggling to play that tom pattern well because you're trying to keep the quarter notes going. Well, this is a great way to practice that. So my number one recommended method for really building coordination is the book Syncopation by Ted Reed. It originally wasn't meant to be a drum set book, but drum set players have taken it and figured out how to use it in really cool creative ways. And I'm gonna give you some specific rhythms uh, and ryth rhythmic melodies that you can use to do what this book does. But basically what you do, you take a rhythm and you play that rhythm in different ways around the kit. Maybe you're playing it with your foot while you're doing something with your hands, or you're playing it on the snare while you're doing something else with your feet. And so you can use an existing rhythm, that structure, to then improvise around it by creating these different frameworks. If that sounds confusing, doesn't make sense, it's okay, I'll show it to you when we go through the specific routine in a moment. So that's a great way to really push your coordination. But another more basic way, another basic method is the book Realistic Rock by Carmine Apice. Classic method, it's been around for almost 50 years. But it's a great uh, beginner rock method, honestly. It starts off beginner, but it gets difficult very quickly, and there's a lot of different ways you can practice the exercises and the grooves in the book. Like I was saying earlier, whatever you practice regularly, it needs to be versatile. It needs to be something that can grow and morph with you as you grow. Because if you sit and you play the same grooves every day, eventually you master them, and sure, you should keep them fresh, but you need to have something else challenging you about those grooves. Maybe it's adding in left foot on the ands. Maybe it's switching your right hand to the ands instead of eighth notes while your left foot plays on two and four. There's different things you can do between your left foot and your right hand to make a groove totally new and interesting and really push your coordination. That book is a great resource for really digging into that. You'll grow a ton if you push yourself to learn everything in there. And another great method, this is a very complex one, very challenging one, but a legendary classic book, uh, Jim Chapin's Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer. It's a great jazz method and it'll really push your coordination. So you can check that out too if you're interested in that. But like I said, I'll give you a specific routine you can follow. If you don't have these books, it's totally cool. You can wait and get them down the road if you want to. By the way, something important to note here, 
Remember that we're talking a 30 minute practice session. And so at this point you might be like, Steven, I can't practice all that hand technique stuff, all this coordination stuff in 10 minutes each or 15 minutes each so that I have a 30 minute practice session. That's insane. Yeah, that would be insane. And so you can't practice everything every day. You've got to pick one thing. So maybe from hand technique, you, you say, all right, I'm just going to work on slow paradiddles or I'm just going to focus on rebound. That's all I'm going to do. So that's, that's it. You do that for 10 minutes. And then the next day you pick something else from that category. That's how you practice productively. Or maybe day one, you just practice hand technique. Day two, you do coordination. You could break it up that way if you wanted to. But I recommend picking one thing from each category and shifting it each day. So you're making your rounds, you're gradually working everything. So part three, music. This is the fun part. This is why we practice hand technique. This is why we, we work on our coordination. Music is the big why. So you know the what, you know all of the hows, the ways we practice this stuff. Music is the why. You've got to always be learning a song. Always be in the process of learning a song, or two or three or four, depending on the, the songs and their difficulty and how much you want to bite off. Whatever song you're learning, it should be a favorite song that you probably already know well because you grew up listening to it or you've listened to it a bunch already, so it's in your head. You're just figuring it out on the kit. That's a great way to start. But also, you've heard me share this tip before if you've watched many of my videos, and it's listen to music just as much or more than you physically practice the drums. So spend just as much time sitting there in your favorite chair with your headphones on listening to music as you do physically practicing your drums because that's how you really grow from a musical maturity standpoint. We can learn all the technical stuff by working hand technique and coordination, but music is where the mental stuff comes in. That's where listening comes in. That's where developing your instincts as a drummer comes in. And that's really important. If you're gonna play with a band, if your goal is to play with a band, you've gotta develop musical instincts. You've gotta learn what to play and how to play it. You've gotta think through a song. You've gotta understand a song, understand how it flows, understand how you can support the song better. The number one way to do that is just listen to music. That's how you build your vocabulary. That's how you figure out what to play so that everything you play feels right. Okay, now for the specific routine, I promise. So I could talk through it all in the video, but that'd be kind of redundant. I'd rather just give you a PDF. So I'm gonna give you a PDF. You can go download it for free right now. And it outlines everything we talked about today, this whole framework. So you've got that uh, for review. And I've also listed out tips for each category, you know, the things to listen for and watch for so that you practice these things well. Because it's not about the what, it's about the, the how, you got it. So be sure to follow those tips and go, go through the whole framework. But within that framework, I've listed out very specific exercises. So if you don't have those method books, that's totally cool. You can start here. You can work these exercises, these grooves to, to basically work and learn everything that we've covered today. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it taught you something valuable. If so, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe before you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Know that you can do this. You can master the drums. Stay non-glamorous.